When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sen vs. the World. I'm Septum Sen, I'm here with Kotobuki J. Hi. And we're here to show you what <clears throat> they got. <laughs> Indeed. Well, you know, before we get started, the biggest news of all, no Gundam. Oh. Seems like the usual news we get every week. I know, what's going on? But we do got something, and we'll show you that something right now. Look at that lovely footage. So, let's see here. That's six and six. All right, well, um, who wants to go first? Uh, How about me, I guess? All <laughs> right. So, first up, from Greg Berlanti and Co., we have the uh, seventh season of the CW's Arrow. <clears throat> the I've been wading pretty deep into the Arrowverse of late, <clears throat> and it's a very interesting group of shows. Very interesting. Even though Arrow, uh, they tried really hard to make him Green Batman. They backed and, off on it as a, yeah. as a, I mean, you've gotten to the part where he's like, I'm not going to kill anymore, right? Well, oh, yeah. Well, he's done that a couple times and then been forced to change his, uh, like, in the Rachel Ghoul story arc. Mm -hmm. Which, <clears throat> yes, the Rachel Ghoul story arc was specifically, oh, was very let's Batman. make him green Batman. <laughs> it was very Batman. <laughs> very <point>. much. But <laughs> I have not yet gotten to season seven. I look forward to it. I will be getting there. But it is now on home release. And yeah. if I recall correctly, they ended it with season eight, right? Yeah. So we're pretty close to the end there. I think I've <clears> seen <throat> the first five or mm -hmm. six. Uh, no, uh, no, not six. I know I've seen the first five. Okay. But I have not seen... Then I stopped watching anything in the Arrowverse. So I guess it's... Uh, <laughs> hmm. I need to get back into it. Just they're hour long each. Hmm. Uh, well, speaking of DC-ish, uh, the movie Brightburn is coming out and that is an interesting concept mm -hmm. uh, I mean I actually yeah that's like what what happens if Superman was raised uh, and he was evil hmm I uh, mean they've had stories like that and it's just kind of a cool concept it didn't do so well in theaters but uh, I am curious about it if it goes down enough in price I will pick it up you said what if Superman was evil yeah 
Uh, watch Injustice. <laughs> well, this is a different kind, like almost uh, a criminal evil. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, Injustice was, he was... Mad with power. Mad with power, exactly. You ever exactly. try to go mad without power? Yeah. It's boring. <laughs> well, he had a very go good reason for going mad. But uh, basically, Injustice, if you never checked this out, it's a great game. It's a great fighting game. But the story mode's fun, too. But I've actually read the comics, and I mm. love the comics. But it's basically, the idea is the Joker kills Lois Lane and most of Metropolis. And Superman murders him. Says he's like enough of this. Yeah. And he basically becomes a fascist dictator, trying mm -hmm. to keep the planet safe. And Batman, of course, leads the resistance, who doesn't believe in this yeah. uh, proactive approach. Dystopian. <laughs> yes, it's very interesting. But at any rate, uh, my next one I'm going to mention. Speaking of people with phenomenal godlike mm -hmm. powers. <laughs> Uh, Neil Gaiman's American Gods has got a second season coming out. I have not yet read the book or seen the <coughs> first series, but I really want to one day. <laughs> it's supposed to be really good. Yeah. Well, speaking <coughs> of, well, okay, not speaking of, this one was creepy. As a child, this creeped me out. I believe Jim Henson's studio was involved in this. Right. Which is a film called The Witches. Oh. This is a film about this group of witches that really hates children. So their idea is, we'll just get rid of all the children. No problem there, you know? And uh, they, they want to basically feed them these potions to turn them into mice and then kill them. Oh. Uh, you know, children's film. Yeah. Uh, you know, for kids. <laughs> but uh, a lot of the stuff, like if they take off their masks, they look like young women, but if they take off the masks, they have these really deformed, ugly, grotesque faces and the transformation that have one of the children turn into a mouse my, my, turn into a mouse was one of the most disturbing ones I have seen I mean oh it, it just creeped me out to this day won't be getting it probably won't be watching it again but if you like something very creepy and disturbing uh, and for children <laughs> uh, watch it for the life of me, I can't remember if I saw that one. I'm I don't. Get two I guess kind of from you know, the way you described, it, I probably would remember, unless I blocked it from my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did for mine. But at any rate, um, one that I cannot say I remember because I have not yet watched it. I have it. It's sitting on my shelf at home. <clears throat> Sentai Filmworks is apparently doing a re-release of their series, Waiting in the Summer. Um, I know it has a different cover. My guess is the initial release lacked an English dub, and this one will have one, but I didn't really look into it. <laughs> but Waiting in the Summer is a series that I'm interested in seeing. From what I understand, and I could be wrong, but from what I understand, this is one of the many, 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 many anime about a hapless male protagonist who ends up uh, cavorting with aliens. <laughs> but he's a filmmaker, which is kind of a fun little twist. And um, I just, I'm curious about the show. I Like I said, I do own an earlier release. I will get to it one of these days. If you have not yet picked it up, here's your chance to get a, a, a fancy, shiny mm -hmm. new release. <laughs> and like I said... I think it's probably just got an added dub. That's my, my most likely guess, but yeah. Well, my next is a re-release by mm -hmm. Sentai, yep. which is Orphan. Now this, this one I... is an old box set I have. Yeah. So uh, Sentai nice has had set. this property for a while. Mm -hmm. All 47 episodes, which also were released mm -hmm. on said format now. Mm -hmm. So condensed, probably. And First time on Blu-ray in this country, so that's a... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's sort of a fantasy mm -hmm. style. I have never seen it. I played a video game of it that was on, I think, PlayStation right. 2. And uh, I've yet to actually watch it, as you can see, still in the shrink wrap. The um, um, original release was ADV, wasn't it? 
I think there was an ADVS before Because if you mm-hmm. remember, again, back in the day, I am just old enough in my anime viewing to remember this back in the day. You will know this quite well. Mm-hmm. You go to any short story, a movie stop or whatever, and you'd see the anime shells, and there'd be certain series that you would see piecemeal over and yes. over and over again, <clears throat> and Orphan was one of them. Oh, definitely. And also, you might remember any show from that time period, uh, I remember specifically Gasaraki. you're watching them their ADV releases and you see that opening preview that they give you Orphan was on so many of them it's not even funny oh yeah well 47 and, episodes spreads out along a, a lot of volumes but this know. is okay. why this series is notable for me and why I had to snap it up I love that theme song I've never seen the show, but I love the theme song. <laughs> so I, I, there, there is that to look at. If you've never heard the theme song, you should get it, you know, because you can at least enjoy the opener. <laughs> oh, and you've got another essential anime, much like yes. Orphan, right? Okay, so um, <laughs> Funimation this week is giving us a couple of new additions to their Essentials line. And as has become a regular feature here... We're going to poke fun at that. Because th- one of them is a show called Keijo. Or maybe I should say it a little more. Keijo! Maybe that's more appropriate. Because there's so many exclamation points after it. It's like, what is that, seven exclamation points? <laughs> oh, we just want to make sure that you know that it is essential. It's, ex- it's So basically, this is a fan service laden, itchy series sports anime you see where we're going with this (laughs) basically the way I understand it is that it's like American Gladiator in swimsuits where they're they don't have tools to knock each other off they have to uh, use what they're given (laughs) uh it sounds fun and incredibly dirty, but I just think it's great that Funimation's calling it an essential. <laughs> uh. Well, I'm glad that they got on the essentials line because the classics <laughs> line really is more their essentials because they're still charging you a pretty penny for the classics. So far, most of the classics are essential. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they'll keep it that way. Another one that's been released, and mm-hmm. this one also by Sentai, mm-hmm. on Steelbook of all things, mm-hmm. is Big O. Mm-hmm. Now this is not a new release. Matter of fact, this is pretty much identical to the release that came out prior. I actually have one of the original Right Stuff advertising cards ah. for its release. And of course I have the two season release that really you're getting. It's hmm. a little bit thicker than your average Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. But I doubt that the Steelbook's going to save you much room over this. No, probably not. Uh, and it's a mecha series, and it got a lot of traction on mm-hmm. Cartoon Network. First season, I've been told, is almost masterpiece quality, mm-hmm. whereas the second season was sort of, okay, well, we wrapped up the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. I still have yet to go on this ride, and uh, mm-hmm. we'll see if it's any good. You know, I have I have heard that that is one of the better mecha series. Of course, that doesn't mean that's necessarily something I'm going to jump at, uh, regardless. But it, it takes from a lot of different elements, mm-hmm. from what I've heard. But I am not a hundred percent because I am not familiar yeah. with it. <laughs> so Sentai is doing a lot of this. They're doing a lot with the Orphan. They're mm-hmm. they're going into their back catalog and putting things on Blu-ray. And now, you know, last week, was it, that we had Elf and Lead? They're oh, apparently yeah. doing a lot of Steelbooks, so that's kind of cool. They're, they're doing some, uh, they're playing around with their formats and stuff. Um, next up is one that we actually started watching, and oh, there's too many of these shows that we started watching, and life got in the way, and we kind of got distracted and just, yeah, petered out at some point. But we started watching a series that produced uh, by Studio Ghibli, if I remember oh, correctly. Yeah. Well, we still can um, get into it. Ronya, <laughs> the Robber's Daughter, a fully CG series, and it takes some getting used to visually. Yeah. It still has that Ghibli look in a lot of ways, but the CG-ness definitely gives it a very different feel, uh, if that makes sense. It's a fun little show. It's basically about the very 
adventurous and headstrong daughter of a clan of thieves mm -hmm. and rob forest thieves basically uh, very young daughter <laughs> yes and a rival clan of thieves moves in kind of like literally right across the <laughs> way and they of course have a boy who's about her age and it's a fun little uh mm -hmm. series Again, haven't been able to finish it, but I would love to have it added to yeah. the collection. So this is one I'm looking at. Is it a at. Ghibli release, or is it... I can't remember. Did Studio Ghibli actually do it, or was it just uh, that they sourced some Miyazaki Well, stuff like out? I said, I, I'm quite sure they produced it. Mm. And uh, I don't remember how actively involved. And I don't think Miyazaki was actively, mm. like, you know, front and center. But Well, my mm. last one... Just going to say, record of Grand Crest Wars, Volume 2. Mm -hmm. You've heard me talk about it a little bit before. That's all. Bye. Ha. Okay, and the last one for me is one that I have not seen, but I've read a good chunk of the manga, and I loved it. But it's a spin-off <coughs> of a series that I've only seen a couple episodes, and I was impressed, but... <laughs> But let me tell you, this is... They're very different. <laughs> yeah, the Titans are after something slightly different. So <laughs> this is uh, another Essentials line, and considerably better for that line, although it's still Essential, I don't know. But Funimation has put out Attack on Titan Junior High is getting the Essentials re-release. And as you can kind of tell from the image here, or from the image here, um, it's very cheapified. <laughs> very cheapified. They, it, it's basically junior high. They're all young. Most of the characters are younger. And they throw together characters who I think in this series would not necessarily have yeah. been... Um, and if I recall correctly, the school is split into humans and titans, mm -hmm. and the principal is a titan. <laughs> and uh, yep. the main dude, Aaron, and his group of friends get involved in wall cleaning activities as their like their required <laughs> club or whatever. Um, but basically, it's just an excuse for completely random shenanigans yeah. Yeah. that plays off of how dramatically inappropriate an adaptation of the regular series it is. <laughs> um, the Titans eat their lunches. Yes. That's what they're after. Aaron <laughs> is a five-alarm Trump-level beyond Trump level racist against the Titans just because they ate his lunch one day if I remember correctly that's like it it's nothing about, like in the series they killed his mother right? oh yeah they eat his mother yeah yeah no they ate his lunch <laughs> same thing yes. right <laughs> yes it, it all starts somewhere right exactly <laughs> like, but no uh, this is but it's crazy fun um i need to see it one of these days i've heard it's not that great but again i like the manga a lot so you know whatever it'll be fun <laughs> well that's all we have for you yep. this time around mm -hmm. i hope you've enjoyed our return for 101 and oh yes we are over 100 yeah now. we are Isn't over 100 that something? yeah so, uh, and we are about to hit, I think, our third year? Jeez. Because we hit two years in, in August. Time flies by. So it's like, yeah. So it's kind of... Mm. But in uh, mm. any case, I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Of course, like, subscribe, and share if you like these informative yeah. videos. We're going to try and keep them shorter so that mm -hmm. you can get them all in those little YouTube sweet spot deals. <laughs> and we will see you on the next one. Mm.